Okay, he's Mr. Engling over your pre calc quiz number two. Uh, chapter P, section one to about five E, I think I included factoring, but not quadratic formula or square root, I assume. September 11, 2018, multiple choice, circle the best solution. Question number one was a um, exponents problem. Um, the common mistake is to think that the negative one is associated with the whole expression. If they wanted the whole expression to be uh, to the negative one power, it would have been two p m to the negative one. Do you see that? You can't see that. Try that again. If they wanted this whole expression to have a negative one exponent, they would have put parentheses on all of this. This whole expression then has an exponent of negative one. Okay. Another common mistake here is the p. This p is has a negative exponent, but it does not include the negative uh, sign in front of it. Again, if they wanted the negative sign to be included with it, they would have done something like this. But this is not the case. So in this problem, p, I put p to the negative 1 power, and this negative sign I just put as a negative 1. Okay, so anytime you see kind of a negative sign for exponents, you put a negative 1. Same thing over here. The m is the only one that has a negative 1 exponent. Anytime it has a negative exponent, you're going to switch places. So from the numerator goes down to the denominator, it becomes m to the first. p to the negative 1 comes down, becomes p. Uh, what did I do? Uh, I have a negative 1 here, and that... Um, negative 2m to the third power I wrote out three times and then the negatives I'm canceling 2 divided by 2's uh, a pair of m's I'm canceling the only thing left in, in the numerator is nothing the common mistake is to write a 0 or make your denominator the numerator which would be incorrect there's a 1 up here there's always a factor of 1 well, if I look at what's left in my uh, denominator, I have negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, and then m times m times m gives me m to the third. 1 over 4m to the third power is your answer, and that would be letter choice A. Question number 2. Multiple choice tells us to solve. I have uh, 3s plus 8 squared equals 36. You could be crazy. And you could expand this, 3s plus 8 times quantity 3s plus 8, then you can do FOIL or the box method, you've got a quadratic and subtract 36, and then you can use any method you want. But you should recognize that it's already factored, this is a perfect trinomial square, and all you have to do is the, the square root method. You can just take the square root of both sides, you're left with 3s plus 8 equals plus or minus 6 because the square root of 36 is 6. I'm going to subtract 8. I get 3s is equal to negative 8 plus or minus 6 divided by 3. So I have negative 8 plus 6, which is uh, negative 2. Negative 2 over 3 is negative 2 thirds. And then I have negative 8 minus 6, which is negative 14, divided by 3 is neg negative 14 thirds. Your answer is A. You can eliminate D because how many solutions are there? One, but it's quadratics. The only possible way that this is uh, possible is if it has, if it has a, a double root, meaning x equals 28 thirds and x equals 28 thirds. Question number three, find the slope and y-intercept of the graph of the linear equation. Okay, I see slope, that's what letter? M and y intercept is B, so my answer should look like y equals mx plus b. Y is by itself. But the equation they give you here, 3x minus 4y equals 20, is not in this form, so I need to get it into that form. This is standard form. Standard form has the x's and y's on one side and the constant on the other. So I'm just going to transform this equation. Let's get y by itself. 
Subtract 3x from both sides. Negative 4y equals negative 3x plus 20. I'm going to divide both sides, the whole entire side, by negative 4. Now I wanted to write out what dividing by negative 4 on the right side looks like. That's negative 3x divided by negative 4 and 20 divided by negative 4. This becomes positive 3 fourths x and this is a minus 5. So your slope is 3 fourths and your y-intercept is negative 5, which would give you letter choice A. Um, question number four. We told you guys to write in the directions to solve. To do that, you're going to have to distribute the m, so you get 3m squared, negative 13m, and then I add 12 to both sides to move this across the equal sign. It gets me a zero, equal to zero. Up to this point, I think you guys only knew factoring. So a times c is 36. My b value is negative 13. Here I wrote out all the factors of numbers that multiply to be 36. And I'm looking for ones that either add or subtract uh, to be uh, 13. Well, I recognize if I take 9 and 4, and I make both of those negative, negative 9 times negative 4 gives me positive 36. Negative 9 minus, or negative 9 plus negative 4 gives me negative 13. I'm taking these two values, and I put them in the bottom left and the top right of my box, and I'm adding an M there. I'm always going to put the first term in the top left, and a, the C value in the bottom right, and then there I'm just finding the greatest common factor. The greatest common factor going in this direction is a 3M. Pay attention, I did not put a 3 on this side because there is not a greatest common factor of 3 going in this direction. 3 does not go into 4 without a remainder. In this case, uh, the greatest common factor is m, so m times 3m is 3m squared. The greatest common factor in this direction is negative 4. If you don't understand that it's a negative 4, you're like, how do I get a negative 4 out of a positive 12? Well, you have a negative 4 times a negative 3. Does that make sense? You can always multiply to check. 4 times negative 4 equals negative 4m. 3 times negative 3 gives me negative 9m. And negative 3 times negative 4 gives me a positive 12. So essentially what you're doing is you're working backwards. Okay. Then these become my binomials. This is just factoring. So I have 3m minus 4 <coughs> and m minus 3. <coughs> Here I'm going to apply the zero product rule. I set each of these equal to 0 and solve. Add 3 to both sides. This means I get m is equal to 3. Over here, I'm going to add 4 divided by 3. I get m equals 4 thirds. So my two solutions are 4 thirds and 3, which is letter choice C. And last question for this class. Factor x squared minus 4 if possible. Um, here I recognize I have an A value and a C value, but I don't have a B value. So in standard form for quadratics, AX squared plus BX plus C, I don't have a B value. You can add that. That's, I usually call that a placeholder. X squared plus 0X <coughs> minus 4. So A times C is negative 4, and my B value is 0. Are there two numbers that will uh, multiply to be negative 4 and then add to be 0? Well, anytime it's a 0 for the B value, these two numbers are going to be exactly the same, but opposites. One will be positive, one will be negative. Remember, if your A value is equal to 1, you don't have to do the box. If you don't understand that, keep doing the box. I'm not showing you. So my answer is x plus 2 times quantity x minus 2. Remember, those could be interchanged, and that would be letter choice B. Hint, hint. Even though some of the questions will look familiar in your test, sometimes I just change pluses and minuses. So if you're just memorizing answers, you're going to get caught. You need to really think of how to do the problem. So I don't know, in years past, I would just change this problem, and I would just put a plus sign, x squared plus 4, and the answer might be, cannot be factored. Or I might, I might change it to x squared plus 4, x plus 4, and the answer might be, uh, no. Um, but you, x squared plus 4, x minus 4, and then it would change. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to 
it can be any of these solutions. I don't want you just to memorize question number five is E or whatever it is. Okay, really think about how to do the problem. All right, so let's go over now. Um, Sorry, on question number six at the bottom. Which set contains no irrational <coughs> numbers? So irrational just means can it be a fraction um, if it is a terminating or repeating, it's still irrational. So 0.5 is irrational. 2 over 7, so I would just take out my calculator and then put it in. Um, 2 divided by 7 is um, this number, and then you'll recognize uh, that it is a repeating one. Rational because it's a repeating number, and then here I have an irrational. So I'm looking for one that's all rational. Over here, I have radical 25, which is 5, radical 1 is 1, square root of 64 is 8, and the square root of 20. Uh, second. And that gives me that number that is not repeating, so that would be an irrational. You should have gotten full credit. My TA is greater than multiple choice if you either picked uh, C or D because I believe. 37 divided by 8 gives us a terminating decimal, which means that would be rational. So if you got either C or D, that would have been correct. Um, look in the green folder, white bin green folder. That side was out of 14 points. Backside. Make sure to show all your work and box your answers. Question number 7. You have a quadratic equation here. What I'm going to do for quadratics, you have to set it equal to zero. What number class? Zero. zero. So let's get it equal to zero. Well, I do not want my a value to be negative. So I'm going to keep that there. I'm going to move all of this to the left side. To go across the equal sign, you are doing opposites. So adding 6x, that equals zero. Adding 6 here, that equals zero. So you should have x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 0. This is in standard form. I can use ax squared plus bx plus c to identify my a, b's, and c's. And then because it tells me by factoring, I can do a times c, which is 9. My b value is 6. Two numbers that multiply to be 9 are 3 and 3, and those same two numbers add to be 6. So now I can take those three values put them into my binomials. Some of you guys wrote x plus 3 squared, the quantity squared, which is fine. You have to set each of those equal to 0, and you'll get x equals negative 3. Your answer is x equals negative 3. A lot of students stopped here at the binomials, and they boxed that. Uh, you got 3 points. Uh, some students like boxed the whole thing because they didn't know, so I give them 3 points. Remember, it's not multiple choice for me. You're telling me your final answer by boxing the answer. And then question number eight. Oh wow, the same problem from the previous quiz. Oh my goodness. All I do is I just pick different letters. Find the exact distance between C and A. Exact means you have a radical or a fraction. If it says round, then you actually have a round dot a decimal. It tells me A and C, so I write down the coordinates. A, right 5, up 3. 5, 3. C is down here, left, negative 3, down, negative 4, negative 3, negative 4. Label my coordinates, x1, y1, x2, y2. If you chose to use the distance formula, D is radical x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. I saw several students not write down the distance formula correctly. I don't know how that's possible, YouTube, because they have formula sheets. I'm recording the video. I highlighted this minus sign in red because it must be in there. It's not there for your convenience. x2 value is negative 3 x1 value is 5. The y2 value is negative 4. The y1 value is 3. Negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. Negative 8 squared is 64. 
Negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. Negative 7 squared is 49. If you add those two together, you get square root of 113. Now, I prefer to use Pythagorean theorem. So here is the two points. So you would just have to make a right triangle. And you just count the sides. This side is 7. This side is 8. 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64, and you can kind of see how it's basically the same as the distance formula. Add those together, take the square root, c equals square root of 113. If you got this and you try to convert it to a decimal like 10 point something, then I gave you 3 points.